You will be forgiven for believing that this was some of the part of Barbados, but is actually St. Philip North, the constituency that Minister of Housing and Lands, Michael Ashley, ought to be representing. No one would ever believe or could ever accept that with him being Minister of Housing and Lands and Minister with responsibility for the Urban Development Commission, the Rural Development Commission, and the National Housing Corporation, that something so horribly shocking could exist right in the constituency he ought to be representing. But this is the reality. Eight years after he has been elected, and even with him being the Housing Minister of Barbados, Meet 80-year-old Mr. Proverbs at Long Bay. His home needs to be replaced. As it is now, his outhouse is next to the road. But that's not all. His water has been turned off by the BWA and his situation has not changed despite a visit and a promise last October 24th by his parliamentary representative, as well as a visit by Mr. Proverbs himself to the Barbados Water Authority, the Fair Trading Commission, and the Office of the Ombudsman. What makes this even more stressful is the fact that government boasts of constituency councils, each of which has $1 million, which could easily assist Mr. Proverbs with his water bill. No one would believe that his parliamentary representative is the Minister of Housing and Lands, who also has responsibility for the Rural Development Commission. Why should an 80-year-old pensioner have to live in such squalor and undergo such stress? Even before the damage caused by Tropical Storm Thomas, Maria Herewood needed a housing solution and coordinated social assistance. Her situation is now even more serious, but that does not bother her parliamentary representative. Like her neighbors, she has to purchase hundreds of dollars in pipe to get running water to her home. There are children here who go to primary school. Their debate is whether it will rain during the night and whether they will be drenched again if it rains. But it gets much worse at Well House, Bentham's and Harry Smith Road. They are pensioners, Elaine Goddard and Lorraine Goddard, whose story is the same. This is a family of about 10 living in makeshift arrangements with outdoor toilet facilities. Despite being an amputee, and despite a visit and a promise by the Minister of Housing and Lands himself over two months ago, he has not looked back, and their reality has not changed. This is severe poverty, and in addition to housing solutions, this family needs coordinated social services, all of which can be provided by the Rural Development Commission, for which their parliamentary representative, Michael Lashley, has full responsibility. At Pete Bay Road, there is Judy Baskin. At age 57, she has been ruled medically unfit to work. Judy shares a home with her 27-year-old daughter, who is the sole breadwinner in the family, and their three grandchildren, all of primary school age. While a debating competition will be important to her grandchildren, having a proper home to sleep, a paved road to get to school, indoor toilet facility, and running water is far more urgent and important to this family. Judy's home needs urgent repairs. There is no running water and the family uses outdoor bathroom facilities. Then there's Harcourt Greenwich, 56 years old and also deemed medically unfit to work. His home, which is sandwiched between Michael Ashley's house and his constituency office, tells the story of poverty. Mr. Greenwich is forced to sleep in his raincoat when it is overcast as a precaution not to get wet. Mr. Greenwich told me that Michael Lashley visited and saw his condition over a year ago, but has not looked back since. It does not seem as though these cases of human suffering are still a priority for him. People in this area also have to buy hundreds of dollars of pipe in order to get water from the Barbados Water Authority. Over at Eastbourne, there is a lot of work to be done. The Minister of Housing and Lands likes to boast about acquiring land all over Barbados, but no such luck for the people of Eastbourne. 
they need good titles to the land. Sites and services in their community and coordinated social assistance for their respective families. The unfortunate thing is that the parliamentary representative for St. Philip North can do all this through his ministry. It does not seem as though bringing relief to poor people who need help badly is still a priority for him. As you walk this constituency and talk to the people, you begin to feel and understand the politics of fear. They want help, but are afraid to speak. The people of St. Philip North are not unreasonable. Their debate is quite simple. After eight years, and with their parliamentary representative being the Housing and Lands Minister of Barbados, what they are forced to endure is totally unacceptable. I agree. Considerable time has now passed since I brought the plight of 59-year-old Valdine Acker and number three Blaise Hill, who is sleeping under a tarpaulin roof, and that of Audrey Simpson of Skeets Bay Road, who needed extensive repairs to his home to the attention of the Minister of Housing and Lands, who has responsibility for the Rural Development Commission. Could it be that my representation on their behalf, as well as their individual cries for help, may not have been enough to move their parliamentary representative, Michael Lashley? But there was a time when he understood human suffering and poverty cases like these. That was a time also when he was an advocate for the small man. All that has changed. His colleagues all agree that Michael Lashley now has new priorities. And so, all across St. Philip North, whether you are in poverty, a pensioner, or suffering with ill health, the reality of all such persons is the same. But it seems to make little difference to Michael Lashley. Young people have to watch helplessly as their parents cry themselves to sleep nightly, wondering how they will get relief. Could it be that Michael Lashley is too busy with other things and cannot be bothered? Is he taking the people for granted? To the extent that the concerns and cries for help from the people of St. Philip North are no longer registering. Whether the serious cases like these I have mentioned and human suffering that tell the story and paint the real and accurate but sad picture. The DLP does not want the rest of Barbados to know about these cases. But instead of repairing houses like those I mentioned, and instead of coordinating the appropriate social assistance for the families involved, and instead of bringing relief to these families by transforming their lives, the parliamentary representative for St. Philip North offers to take me on a tour. The people are speaking, so there is no need for debate. The time for touring and time wasting has also ended. There is serious work to be done and I'm ready to serve. I am in the aware, the Barbados Labour Party's candidate for St. Philip North, and I approve this message.